listening to the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS podcast with hosts John and Pemba and James Grande. What is going on, everybody? John Pemba here with James Grande. Welcome into the Better Baseball MLB DFS Playbook podcast. Here we are recording for Monday's three game main slate. James, we have just three games to kick off the week because this is the final week of the MLB regular season. Uh, this is the beginning of the end for us here with the Better Baseball MLB DFS Playbook Live show. Uh, we do not continue this through into the playoffs. We will continue our DFS content throughout the playoffs over at Fantasy Slam. You'll have your playbooks and showdown write-ups uh, for everybody here with James and I. Uh, we take a little bit of break from the podcast life, and then we shift gears to the NBA scene and get everybody ready for the NBA season. Uh, and then we'll be back uh, for the NBA DFS Playbook and live streams once the tip-off of the season occurs there. Uh, but that is a few weeks away. We still have the final days of the MLB season to get through here, James. And uh, they're giving it to us easy first. Three games here to start the week. Uh, some pretty interesting matchups uh, as well with Texas, LA, Houston, Seattle, and San Diego, San Francisco on that main slate. Before we break it all down, though, quick shout-out. To our friends at RT Sports, if you go to rtsports.com slash alarm, use promo code ALARM23. New users will get a 100% deposit match up to $200. Can take part in their DFS contest or their DFS Pick'em contest. I had a nice little score here on the Sunday with the DFS Pick'em. Uh, 40X. We hit a 40Xer. Uh, six picks for the uh, NFL. We stacked all the overs in that Chargers-Vikings game, and uh, we can't home with a Nice little pretty penny there, James. So you could do that too when you go to rtsports.com slash alarm. Take advantage of that promo code offer today and get your bonus money in your account so you can play some RT Sports this week. Let's turn it on over. DraftKings main slates on the board. Just three games. We're going to go position by position here because it's only three games. This will be a quick show for everybody here. Uh, James, pitching, Blake Snell, Luis Castillo, Justin Verlander, Logan Webb, John Gray, Patrick Sandoval, are the six starters on the slate. Uh, Blake Snell is the cover of today's program here, and uh, that's where we're going to kick things off. Yes, we will. Uh, I mean, look, he's the NL Cy Young with a bullet. It's not even close at this point. Um, He's been tremendous. He's probably having the best year of his career, despite having a Cy Young, you know, already on his – where do you put a Cy Young, you think? You put it in a case? Do you think you put it on like a shelf? Where, where, where would you put your Cy Young, John? I would imagine someone like Blake Snell, who's highly decorated, probably has like, <laughs> has like a room. Yeah. Or has a room of yeah, trophies probably. And, and ribbons and, and things. That's fair. So. That's fair. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would put it on a shelf. That's where yeah. I have all my, uh, including my Alexei Pokashevsky uh, yeah. card. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm looking at my uh, best ball FSGA championship ring. Nice. Uh, as well as my Home Depot Employee of the Month. So, um, you know, both of those. That was are, a flex. That was a flex. Nicely. Listen, I was Operations Associate of the Month back in 2012. So I uh, don't sleep on it. You ever see that video of the dude handing uh, the girl the Costco card? Uh, it's the meme. He hands her the Costco card and she's like, wow. Yeah. And she flips it over. Yeah, that's, yeah. That was that was a little. I felt a little bit of that, but anyway, a Costco card aside, yeah. uh, congrats on your employee of the month. Thanks. Um, big deal. Big deal. It was. Just, I mean, you kept it, so obviously. Uh, Blake Snell's final uh, final start here, probably most likely. Maybe he'll make another one. Actually, yeah, make one more. Um, make one more. Uh, he has been as good as advertised, and the Giants have been terrible. Um, and he started twice against him this year. Twelve scoreless innings, nineteen strikeouts. In those games, 33 fantasy points per game. We just saw it uh, at the beginning of September, six scoreless. So he's gone six scoreless, eight strikeouts in both games against them. Um, there's no reason not to go here. Uh, it's Chalk City, but it's well worth it at 9,600. And then, truthfully, like Luis Castillo, John, we had that stretch where we just couldn't keep the ball in the yard. Yeah. And now, since August 16th, he's only allowed three home runs. So, like... Whatever happened during that stretch of starts is not happening anymore. Um, and I, I know 26 home runs and 31 starts isn't great, but he allowed really- one home run this year against Houston in his two outings against them. Yeah, and, and that's great. And he's been good against them. I mean, two five seven ERA in those two starts. We know Houston can be potent, but 
Um, let's see, five of the last six starts, Castillo's gone at least six innings and allowed two or fewer runs. So uh, he is in the midst of a really good stretch, 25-plus fantasy points in five of those six games. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you here. The problem, obviously, under small slate, and, and this is one of probably the rare occasions where if you wanted to, you could bitch uh, both guys here. Would you go Verlander against Seattle and just run him up against Castillo here? Sure. Yeah, uh, Seattle's scuffled a little bit. Um, it's, you know, Verlander hasn't been great, but he also, we've been paying premium, and now we're paying 8500 for him. So I, I definitely like the price reduction because I don't want to pay the 10, 5, 10, 7, 10, 2, 9, 8 that we've been paying for him. Right. Uh, value tier ish, I guess. Uh, Logan Webb is 79. <laughs> like that feels like a really good price tag for Webb. He's just running up against Snell. Then you have John Gray against a bad Angels lineup and Sandoval against Texas. We're not going to touch Sandoval here, but, um, you know, Gray hasn't been any good shakes either here. Do you, do you find any appeal to any of these guys or are you just spread it up? I don't know. Uh, the web thing is a little interesting because the price, which I think yeah. you, you pointed out, but like, dude, San Diego's been amazing. Like mm-hmm. they've lost one of their last, what they're like 11 and one, their last 12 games or whatever. And yeah, it's a team um, they should have been this whole year, you know? Correct. Absolutely correct. Not not going to dispute that at all. But it's happening right now, right? Like, it's still, they're in the midst of this, like, I think I saw that their playoff, their playoff uh, chances increased, like, 0.4% after they won, like, the seventh game in a row. Um, They're 9-1 and one over the last 10 games officially. Like, it's kind of a, they're, for a team that's two games under, they're plus 91 run difference. Right yeah. with the Cy Young winner on um, pitching, so like the Logan Webb thing is, I I know what you're saying, and you're not a guy who rosters Logan Webb ever. You haven't rostered him like once probably Often, this year. No. Yeah. Um. So to say to like him is one thing. Yeah, I think you, I actually think he probably. That's that's you in a nutshell. Um. Yeah, true. Like I don't know if I would go here just with how good San Diego's offense has been, but I would probably take a stab at one of the two bottom guys probably john gray i know he's again kind of been meh but angels have kind of been meh you know yeah. they shut down otani they lost from yeah, trout's, Gifo, done, yeah. trout's done ward's done crone's done moniac is done rendon's done like they're playing joe adele every day you know yeah. so um i don't hate the idea of getting john gray sure uh, over at the catcher position, then let's move on here. Uh, I still like Kyle Raleigh. He all of his power yep. comes against left against right handed pitching. You have Verlander, who again you mentioned struggled a little bit. So uh, Raleigh at 42 feels pretty good. Not to dismiss Garver against the lefty at 43 or Haim against Sandoval as a switch hitter there. Uh, but Raleigh's kind of where I'm keying in on. Yeah, I think he's the he's the top play. Um, and if you do want to target John Gray, Logan O'Hop. Uh, he's had a couple home runs in his last few games. I know the numbers don't look great, but if you look at like September in general, he has like six home runs, seven home runs this month in, in total. Um, this is a guy who's off to a really hot start and then suffered a, a pretty bad injury. So mm-hmm. uh, I would I would play Logan O'Hop here uh, as my other, probably the other catcher. Uh, yeah, and then after that, there's really not much else because it's a small slate. So yep. um, I don't think I'm going much lower anybody for you or that's just sam kind of huff did he get optioned yeah he's not even on the team anymore i would say i would punt him if he was still in the team but he's not sure. uh first base position here again nathaniel lowe's a lefty lefty brandon drury against gray i mean this is one of the ugliest first base positions we've had in a while maybe it's just nolan chanel here like a shane Uel, however you want to pronounce his name uh 3400 against gray maybe that's where, we're, where we look to go yeah i would play him um is it Chanel? I think. Chanel? So I call them Chanel, but Colby called them Chanuel. So. Well, Colby, maybe Colby is just trying to get a little spice, you know. Maybe. Um, maybe. Let's, we'll look it up. See if there's a, a pronunciation on. Um, here, but. Uh, do they have it on? No, I don't see it. Uh, yeah. Nevertheless, uh, I would go there. I would also. I was gonna say Jared Walsh, but he's just been so bad, dude. Um, he's been awful. I mean, Mike Ford maybe against Verlander if he's in the lineup. Um, that's a home run, yeah. Just for like a cheap home run, that's yeah. all he does. Mm-hmm. Maybe Ty I France because he's cheap. 
Yeah, Ty France is he cheap, but I mean, not he hasn't been great. It's just again small slates, so you I know. But what? But what else? What else, like neither I, I, has I, anybody. I mean, you, know? you could go lefty, lefty Nathaniel Lowe. He's hit lefties well, or did at least last year. But he's also five for his last thirty nine too. Like it's not yeah, pretty pop. It, it's a uh, it's a small slate blues there at first base. Second base is obviously a little bit better. Altuve, Semyon, Kim here uh, if, at the very top. Uh, Rojas down at the bottom at 31. Uh, another one that you could take a peek at for some value. Yes. I mean, Semyon stands out right away. Double dong the other day. Uh, he's been, what do we talk about? Like every end of year, nearly 30, 100, 117 runs and 15 stolen bases. And you're like, oh, Marcus Semyon was great. But again, another hot like finish to his season. So I definitely go there. Um, Hussey on Kim trying to get 40 stolen bases. Like all he's doing is running these days. You could definitely get there. Um, but that's probably it. A, a, like, I don't even know if there's any. Really there really is. Rojas is the guy I threw out there. Uh, third base has Machado Bregman, but you have Josh Young against a lefty. That's been our go-to spot for most of this year. So got him at 48. Uh, maybe go Ezekiel Duran at 33 down here uh, for some value. But again, small slate blues here. Yeah, I would say Josh Young is the top third baseman of the slate. I would play Machado because, again, San Diego's just been really good lately, and Machado's been at the forefront of that. So um, I would play those two. I would maybe take a stab at someone um, like you guy Rosario as well who is okay. playing for San Diego. Uh, he's been pretty good. Eduardo Escobar is playing for the Angels if you wanted to play him at 2700. Yeah. Uh, shortstop position has Seager, has Machado, as we mentioned, Xander <laughs> Bogarts, who had been really good for a little bit. Crawford at 41. Um, and then after that, I, I don't know where I would go. Again, it feels like we run out of players pretty quickly. Yeah. Um that's that's it. That's Probably it. Crawford, the cheapest guy you play. Maybe Nato. Sure. Maybe, but he's not getting a lefty, so like obviously, it's yeah. A little concern. Uh, outfield, very extensive plays. Obviously, Drew, uh, Rodriguez, Tatis, and Tucker, uh, Jordan Soto. Uh, do you have a core spot here in the outfield? Um, I would say it's the way that Soto has been going. I mean, he's been just unconscious yeah. another um, guy you're gonna look up at the end of the season and be like oh he had 100 runs 35 home runs 110 rbis and think like he had a good year he's been unconscious that's all i'll say that's probably where i'd go first mm-hmm. um j-rod probably second just given the the dual threat ability the Jordan thing is interesting. I know he still homered on Sunday and whatnot, but uh, he has the right elbow. I wonder, like, I mean, he they need obviously he needs to play because they're only a game, they're only half a game ahead of Seattle for the final wild card spot right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if the elbow starts barking a little bit because if he can't, if he's not playing in the field because the elbow, like, is that causing? Is he gonna start? bothering him to swing i don't know we'll see yeah it's possible um mid-tier in value plays in the outfield i, I i'm fine with t oscar evan uh, carter dude evan carter whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, this guy is a freaking it's a lefty lefty but i don't think that matters at this point right no dude he's been awesome and i think sandoval has been pretty bad against lefties this year as well. mm-hmm. uh kalanick for the cheap pop at 37 uh, Joe Adele, I guess, at 35. Leodi's at 35. Yeah, Leodi's been another guy that um hitting the baseball really well. We know yeah. Grossman's gonna. We know Grossman's gonna play against a lefty too. Mm-hmm. What's Canzoni at these days? Struggling, struggling. Um, uh, but all right. Any other value outfielders for you then? Any other value? Maybe Profiles Brett Phillips. Hitter. Brett Phillips. Yeah, Profiles a switch hitter. Gets gets uh, web. Where's Brett Phillips at these days? Yeah, he's playing for the Angels. He's 24. He's homered a couple times recently, but like, he might not even be in the lineup, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, so, um, 
Yeah, you know, it's a little, it's a bunch of just kind of muck down here. I would agree with you. Let's uh, let's build the lineup and get out of here again. Three game madness. Uh, we're right on Snell. We just run Verlander, I guess. Then here, or what are you on to Castillo? Uh, I'd rather Castillo if we can do it. If we can okay. afford, we will. We, afford we will definitely do our damnedest. <laughs> um, guess we're going to do a Hoppy with Chanel. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, second base gives us 4K a play. You liked Simeon. Well, where is there? A, where can we get value? Outfield. Outfield uh, is probably the value. Joe Adele. We're just stacking right. angels against Sean Gray. Yeah, I guess so. I, or uh, Texas Grossman, thirty-two. Uh, Grossman or Sandoval is good. Okay, that's forty-three. We wanted Josh Jung, so I guess we give that a go. Forty-one hundred shortstop. Our cheapest is Crawford. Um, uh, 42 for an outfielder and a second baseman. What did we have oh, here? I mean, if you wanted to play Rojas, you could then spend up, or if you wanted to play Caballero, I yeah, don't know let's who's play. let's place. Got a full yeah, on Angel Seattle, Texas stack. Let's go. Let's ride. Let's ride. Snell, Castillo, Ahop, Shanuel, or Chanel. We'll find out how to say it. Rojas, Young, Crawford, Adele, Grossman, and, and Adolis Garcia here. Uh, quick look at a three-game lineup. It's going to be ugly, but James is on your playbook, so he'll steer you correctly, uh, getting you all ready for this uh, three-game Monday slate. We'll be back uh, for the probably very abbreviated shortened live stream at 5 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, but get in the Discord, get us on Twitter, and we will catch you all later.